Um, I'm coming from uh, this university, from the University of Niche. I'm working at the Faculty of Science and Mathematics, as you see. Um, I wish all you welcome to our university, this school, of course. Uh, so I will uh, talk this couple of days about uh, the, the dynamical system, which is uh, the main topic of uh, my research work. And uh, um, what? I had questions when I started to prepare this uh, this course about uh, what's uh, the best way to incorporate these dynamical systems in the main topic of uh, post two. And uh, the other question was uh, where to start uh, uh, in the so the previous knowledge of the, the participants of this course, so I decided to uh, start with uh, some basic uh, definitions and introductions so that you can uh, follow me in the last, uh, so don't worry. And um, since basically this is the, the school for uh, uh, don't worry, there will be uh, not too much. Mathematics and try to, to incorporate at least the top of mathematics as, uh, as I could, but uh, of course. So, um, what is the, the topic uh, in the dynamical systems? I say that uh, the differential equation is the field of mathematics which has a very long history, maybe over 300 years. And the uh, basic questions concerning differential equation is suppose how to solve some differential equation. And uh, the other uh, basic question, at least concerning the mathematics, mathematician, is um, uh, existence and weakness of the solution, of course. Uh, so um, the Question about the existence and the uh, uniqueness of the initial differential equation. I'd say that uh, this problem is uh, pretty much solved for a uh, uh, quite a huge class of the differential equation at the, the first half of the 20th century. Uh, thanks to the uh, previously uh, the theory of the fixed points. Uh, another question is, of course, how to solve the differential equation. And uh, in the first, we studied the linear differential equation. And the problem of solving the linear differential equation more or less um, is easy if we consider the linear differential equation with a constant coefficient, consider the, using the, the matrix uh, calculation, we can do that. But in the um, end of the 19th century, let's say, the extensive study of the nonlinear differential equation study, uh, basically motivated by the application. Uh, so in the application, more or less, you have a nonlinear differential equation. And of course, it turned out that uh, most of the nonlinear differential equation course you can solve. I mean, analytically. Uh, and at that time, uh, the point uh, goes in two directions. Uh, one is uh, develop a uh, numerical matrix for approximation of the solution, of course. And another topic, uh, uh, which the basic field which we will see in this course, I will try to present you the, the basic tools. This quality theory of differential equation. So, what we want to do, we want to um, characterize the properties of the solutions without uh, having uh, the analytically uh, solution, without we have uh, the explicit solution of the differential equation. So, we want to describe solution uh, as much as possible. So, for example, is uh, the solution periodic or not? Uh, do we have also the solution or not? Uh, does the solution tend to infinity or uh, tend to, to some of things, uh, limit? Is it bounded or unbounded and so on? So it depends on the okay. So the field of qualitative uh, theory of nonlinear differential equation, especially 
uh, was extensively studied in the 20th century and still is, uh, is developing in that direction. So um, I will here uh, discourse uh, to send you um, some basic tools of uh, the quality theory differential equation. So, of course, we will study with some uh, basic definitions of uh, what is the face portrait, what uh, we measure with the uh, stability of uh, differential of the dynamical uh, systems. And, of course, some mathematical preliminaries, uh, since from the linear algebra, and of course, what is the general solutions of the system of differential equation. Of course, here I will present you only uh, the, some methods and techniques in nonlinear dynamics in the plane. So that's how much I will have time. Of course, some of these techniques can be applied for the high dimensions. I will tell you which one, but some, of course, uh, is uh, pretty much uh, connected only with uh, the, the plane, especially concerning the, the limit size. Um, we will start with uh, the phase portrait for the planar linear systems, the two dimensional linear systems. You will say, okay, I can solve it. Yes, we can solve it. No problem. We exactly know how the solutions of the linear uh, two dimensional systems phase. So, why to do the phase portrait? Because we will use it in the non linear dynamics. So, we have to know how the um, Attractories and how the phase portrait looks for the linear uh, planar dynamical system in order to apply it in the nonlinear dynamics. That's why uh, the other way is okay. You will just see in the introduction that it's very easy to, to solve the, the linear uh, systems of uh, differential equation. So we will uh, the classify the, the fixed points. And we will see uh, the basic three types of uh, uh, phase portraits concerning the two-dimensional uh, linear, uh, linear systems. And we see the basic classification of the solutions. And uh, the next, we will continue with the nonlinear quantum systems. Uh, we will see what is the linearization. This part, of course, we will use the, the previous chapter, so the phase uh, portrait of the uh, linear uh, systems. Uh, we will see how to construct the phase plane diagram in, in the in the phase plane uh, with uh, some uh, with some examples. And um, one of the characteristic of the nonlinear dynamics, which is uh, not uh, concerned with uh, the uh, linear uh, systems is a limit cycle, which of course uh, goes with to the periodic solutions of the of the model of the, the systems that we get. So we will see um, just uh, most frequently used uh, techniques uh, how to eliminate limit cycles uh, in some nonlinear systems or how to prove that uh, there is uh, a limit cycle in some nonlinear systems. And uh, finally, I hope that uh, we, will have, <laughs> we will have enough time and see about the bifurcation, which is uh, very important in the, the uh, application. So what is basically the bifurcation? If we model anything, we will have some parameters. And uh, if you change the parameters, if the small changes in the parameters uh, to the changes in the dynamics of the nonlinear systems, what is the change of the dynamics? Uh, the change of the stability of the fixed point, uh, the changes, uh, you can have one fixed point or well, can appear two fixed points, three fixed points, or the fixed point can disappear. From the, with the changes of the parameters, so that you all change the dynamics of the nonlinear systems. That's what we call it, uh, bifurcation. And I will present you the three uh, most typical saddle mode, transcritical, and pitfork uh, bifurcation, which concerns to 
uh, the appearance or disappearance of the fixed points and the hope bifurcation, which constant to appearance or disappearance of the limit cycle in the end of the manifold system. So that is uh, more or less the uh, topics uh, for uh, for the following. So as I said, uh, I decided just to start the introductionary as we will see, maybe we can go faster or slower <laughs> to, to this part. So, of course, what is the, the systems of um, and differential equation uh, of uh, this form? Uh, the function f is the given function, and unknown functions are we have un unknown functions uh, epsilon one to epsilon uh, n, and t is, of course, the um, parameter of, of the function. Uh, of course, uh, we use the simple notation, we use the vectors and the matrix calculus, but uh, uh, not uh, so uh, so complicated. So we can uh, read write the, the system in, in this uh, this form using the, the vector uh, vector notation of the vector and of course the, the vector field uh, the capital F. Uh, we will hear uh, concern. With, something that is called in differential equation autonomous systems of differential equation what's that mean that mean that here the right side this function does not depend on on the time at all you will see the the advantage of, of this uh, this particular uh, of, um, knowledge for for differential equation now of course uh we will start as i said with the, the linear differential equation here you see the um the system of the linear differential equation with the constant coefficient the constant coefficient uh but we will proceed with the second order equation um the really first order differential equation you can solve the linear differential equation you will see later Basically, uh, uh, pretty much simple. For linear differential equation, first order we have a formula, so there's no problem. But even the second order linear differential equation cannot be solved for all the coefficients. So only the linear differential equation with constant coefficients we can uh, solve using the, the matrix calculus, of course. Uh, so, okay, the solution. Here, the initial problem. So, what is the initial problem? So, if you win application, no, the, the, the solution at some point of time. Of course, we use the time zero frequently. Uh, uh, and uh, using that initial condition, you want to, to solve the, the differential equation or to see how your. Um, a model uh, will behave for uh, as, as time passes uh, to, to starting from, from the initial initial point. And as I said, the case from mathematical points of view, but you will see here also we uh, must have a conditions for existence and unique solution. You will see later for one very important reason uh, in order to plot the, the, the phase diagram. Um, there is uh, mathematically uh, many different types of uh, uh, theorem of existence and uniqueness of the solutions under different conditions, but uh, the most frequently used, uh, especially in application. So, what do we need uh, to have existence of the solutions that the functions on the right side is continuous? If they are, you have existence of the solutions, but not yet uh, unique. So you, what that means? That means you can have two solutions passing to one point. And this is very difficult if you go into the numerical estimation because you don't know which solution you have to try. If two solutions pass um, to one point, and of course it is 
but not not good also in the quality theory of differential equation. So basically, if you start with a numerical methods or the quality theory of differential equation, uh, first that uh, you uh, do is um, uh, you are sure that uh, you have existing sentiment. So for the solution, but basically. Uh, Okay, this is a mathematical problem more or less because uh, if you model almost anything that I met in the application, uh, the functions are continuous and discontinuous to differentiate. But it's very, very rare that uh, you have um, a function uh, which is uh, which does not uh, satisfy this condition. So um, actually, we study, as I said. Mostly two-dimensional uh, nonlinear system, so of this form. That's it. We cannot solve it. So what we want to do, we want to describe the solutions, the properties of the solutions, only by functions f and g. So from the functions f and g, and you will see how we will actually do that. Of course, again, we use uh this uh, notation uh, x is a vector and f is uh, what we call the, the vector field of course the fixed point of the system or equilibrium point or stationary point uh, is a constant vector which solves the right hand side of the differential equation uh we will start with the planar as i said uh Differential uh, system of differential equation with a constant coefficient. So in the next chapter, here and again using the matrix, which coefficients are a, b, c, and d. Again, we can uh, system. We can write the system in the matrix form, as we said. So. Very simple x prime is a matrix and multiplied by the, the vector vector. Of course, the um, if the determinant of the matrix A is different from zero, then this system has only one equilibrium. Okay, because to point the equilibrium, you have to solve this linear system of differential equation, homogen linear system of uh, differential of uh, ordinary of ordinary uh, equation. Uh, the right hand side of some nonlinear systems, so here the function f and g, defines what we call the vector field. Uh, moving too much, yeah. Uh, the vector. Ah, uh, just stop. Okay. Uh, the vector field, uh, capital F. So at each point, uh, mapping F. Which is defined by your uh, small f and small g assigned the vector f of x. Uh, so think about so what is f of uh, f of x. So we can consider it as the vector which uh, x component is f of x of y and g of uh, x of y. Uh, we visual the phase based at the point of x epsilon and you can now see that for the system very simple which is mounted here the vector point is this point here so at every point we draw the vector okay we know the vector is it clear because the vector is given only by the differential equation so by the so by the function f and g. So in every point, one, two, we just calculate these functions and we have a vector. So to every point, we can point the, the vector. Uh, so we can plot the vector field uh, very easy and it 
almost all the computers programming I'm uh, here use the law from mathematical basis to plot the, the face portrait, the vector points, and, and also you can do that uh, pretty much easy to plot the, the vector field of the so. What is now the face portal? So just imagine that you flow to the vector field. So just the approximation of the vector field. Just imagine that you start flowing to the vector field like this. So if you flowing along the flow along the, the vector field, the phase point. What it do? It trace the solution of the of the system, and we had the trajectory. What we called the trajectory. So, what is the trajectory? Trajectory is the curve now in x epsilon, uh, which we call the phase plane, and it uh, is uh, the curve which parametric equation is given. In this way. So uh, actually for all t, so for all time, the tangent vector at some point, we know that tangent vector it's given by this, or okay, it's given by this. It, it is based in uh, this. So every solution of the differential equation uh, in this sense defines a motion along the, the curve. Uh, drawing the trajectory in uh, x epsilon plane, which is, as I said, uh, we will call it the phase plane, and uh, um, but we don't uh, only plot the trajectory. We also track the directions of the trajectory as the time increases. So we plot the trajectory. Um, together with the motion along the screen, with the increase in time, and that is what we call the, the phase portrait of the system. So this is the set of all trajectories uh, uh, in, the, in the phase plane. Uh, geometrically, the dynamical systems is describing the motion of uh, some points in the phase plane along the trajectories, which is, as we saw, defined by the system of differential equation. Uh, so you probably ask how we will do that. That's the main point that uh, I will try to, to show you how to plot the phase plane. Because for the linear systems, we know the solution. And it will be easy to plot to the phase point. We know how the curves looks like. But for nonlinear systems, do not. But we will see that we can use the techniques. And um, what can we uh, say about the solutions after that? That is what we start. So, uh, by uh, describing the phase plane point, you can say if the solutions are uh, periodic. Uh, if the solutions uh, tends to some finite points, that means that we will have some fixed points that all solutions will approach as the time increase. So that means that the solutions will go, or we will have unstable fixed points. What that means? That will mean that uh, your solution tends to infinity plus infinity and so it will be unbound. And you will uh, now have uh, the, the, the stable the dynamic assistance. So, uh, for the normal systems, the phase portrait would look like this, for example. So, we will have uh, the fixed point like this, like A, C, or B. Uh, if you now look uh, at the, these um, fixed points, we can say that all these, these three fixed points are unstable. Why? Um, except this. This is very particular case that I will talk about a little bit later. So only if you start from here, you will approach to this fixed point. If you start anywhere else, you're moving away. So 
from everything else you are moving away from this, also from this point, also from this point. Uh, but uh, the fixed point B uh, will have some interesting point to, to the application because here we will have a periodic solution. So we have a spirals that circle around this, this point. And uh, what will else will uh, we will have in a nonlinear dynamics, but not in a linear case. This is closed curves like this D on the picture, uh, which, as you may assume, is uh, um, characteristic of the periodic solution. So if you start at this uh, closed circle, you're just circling around with some time you are coming back. So you have a periodic solution of the model uh, that uh, that you will that you will have. So the cycle of efficiency the periodic orbit or any closed trajectory, uh, which is of course not an equilibrium equilibrium point. Uh, so I already mentioned stability just uh, on this this picture. Um, of course. Generally, the, the stability is if all the trajectories are uh, approaching uh, with increasing time to, to some, some point. But generally, the mathematical, formal mathematical definition is here. So, what will be the stability? But maybe better explain on the picture. Of course, you have the, the, the formal mathematical definition. So, if you start close enough to the fixed point, you will stay close enough to the fixed point. Okay, so you will not move away. So if you start close enough, that's mean from here, you will stay in some circle, with bigger or smaller radius. Never mind, but you will stay close. To it. But except of the stability, we have also the asymptotic stability, which means what? Not that you uh, will not move away from the, the fixed point or from the, the um, cycle, but you will approach it. So not only that, so if you are starting close to some fixed point, then after some time, you will approach to, to this uh, point, which generally to this. So we have the finite limit of uh, extent to, to, to that fixed point. Um, so, okay, maybe one basic, very basic example of the second order linear differential equation, which of course uh, can be written as the systems of the differential equation. So, okay. Are you familiar with Solo? Do you know the differential equation? Okay, it's already in here or here. So X is supposed to the displacement. Uh, we have the, the mass attached to the to the spring, and X uh, denotes the, the displacement of the mass from its uh, uh, resting place. So X is positive is uh, is uh, stretched, and negative is, is compressed. Um, M is of course the the mass of the oscillator, damping constant, and the spring constant. And if B is equal to to zero, then we have this very simple uh, differential equation. This is second order, it is linear, it is with constant coefficient. And we said it is a homogen. What is a homogen? That means that the right hand side is zero. You can also have the, the function on the, the, the right hand side. Um, so, written in the system, this is of this form. Uh, so, let's see first how the, the vector field looks like. So if we are on the, we say that uh, we will uh, trace the vector field. The vector field 
we know from the right hand side. So let's see for this example how the vector field looks like at uh, each point. Uh, first, let's see for zero. Gets mean on x axis. Okay. What is the vector? So the vector, the first coordinate is zero, and we have the second coordinate. So since the first coordinate is zero, the vector is like this or like this, okay? Upward or downward. It is upward if it is the second coordinate, so this is positive, okay? Then we are going upward. This is negative. We are going downward. So we are going upward here or downward here. How the axis look on the V -ox, uh, axis? So the vector field is now V0. So it's horizontal. Okay. So again, it is positive. The first coordinate is positive, it's going to the right. And if first um, coordinate is negative, it's going to the right. So here we have to the right and down. So below the x axis, we are pointing to the right. Of course, I, I will show that this will be one of the, the basic technique how to, to plot the, the, the uh, vector field uh, for the nonlinear uh, non linear systems. And we will, of course, do uh, this uh, more carefully a little bit later, probably, probably tomorrow. Uh, so, but uh, at least uh, from these vectors, we can now imagine how we will go. So, we will circle around. Uh, the zero, zero is a fixed point, okay, of the system. Uh, but uh, the phase per end, if you start there, you will stay there. The fixed point is like that. You will start your motion from the fixed point, then you're I'm not moving, so you're staying there. But if you start anywhere else in the phase plane, you will just circling around the, the fixed point. Uh, you have a closed orbit, and this is definitely the phase portrait for, for these systems. So how can we interpret this? In the motion of the, the the mass on the the spring, of course the fixed point. This is equilibrium point, so we are not uh, moving. It is in the the, the rest uh, position. But what about the circling at uh, the the close uh, the close orbit? So when the displacement is negative, so we are here in this position or in the face plane, we're here, okay? So the placement is negative after. Yeah, yeah. there is a Yeah. Is it stable or after? Uh, the fixed part, this orbit. Um, stable. And what you mean? Uh, how is because uh, for the periodic orbit, there is a mean, uh, stability. No, no, no. Fixed point here is uh, stable because you, if you uh, start closing up to this fixed point, you're staying there. You're not moving away from the fixed point. No. Okay. Because but uh, the closed orbits uh, don't define the, the stability property of this closed orbit. So you're just having the periodic solutions. You cannot assign the stability property for, uh, for such a closed orbit. But this periodicity depends on the initial value. But here, yes. That will come to the yes. To the yes. yes, because the initial value is uh, nothing else than the phase point. So you, you're starting from one phase point, that, that means you're starting from one circle. You will circle from there. So there are no spherules, basically. Uh, for this, no. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. 
The initial condition the initial is that uh, if you start closing up to the fixed point, then you're staying close enough, you're not moving away. So if you just circling, you're not moving away. We're on the uh, just uh, just imagine that this is the regular circle, not the left side like on the picture. If you are on the circle, then you are always on the same distance from the fixed point. Okay. Yes, but you, yeah. you, you're not moving away from the fixed point, so the fixed point is still stable, but it's not asymptotically stable. Ah, you're not approaching. Yes. That, that's your, but I will talk about this also in the later when I classify the, the fixed point. So this is the fixed point which is called the center. And this is the only um, fixed point that is uh, uh, stable, but not asymptotically stable. So you will never approach that point. But uh, the movement is the same because you are not moving away from this circle, but you are not approaching. Right. So it's stable, but it's not a single stable. Anyway, the, the good question, of course, because this is uh, the very typical, uh, the very typical uh, dynamics. Uh, that and you will see that the center uh, will have a very typical in the application. Uh, but uh, also, um, it will make the problem in the, in the study of the normal dynamics. It will not be very easy to establish that uh, we have uh, such, uh, such a behavior of the normal dynamics. Sorry? If I'm not wrong, I yeah. don't know who feels there, so that doesn't show that I just didn't see that. Doesn't show the characteristics of the system. Uh, base forces? Yes. Yes. Wait, why did you say no? Sorry? What is your, why do you think it doesn't show the characteristics? Uh, I don't know if uh, we saw zero to number. So I think I don't know if it was here. Anyway, she just got the yeah, or, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, okay, uh, so the, the first position in the where the displacement is negative, but the velocity uh, uh, is zero. So you're up, and the spring is most compressed. Next, phase point moves this direction, so we are moving. Um, in the clockwise here direction, so this way. Uh, so we are moving um, along the, the close order and um, X increasing, but V is now positive. So the mass is being pushed. So we are on the V axis and the position B. Uh, but at that time, the mask has reached so x is zero. But at this point, it has a large velocity, so overshoots, and uh, we have after some times and the position C. So where now the x is positive, so we are now here. The mass spring is um, fetched down. Uh, and uh, finally, mass gets pulled up uh, and eventually completes the circle in the start position uh, to D and from D to A, uh, again up, uh, going up. Um, okay. Uh, as I said, I, I put. Uh, just 
the, the basic tools that I will use, but you will tell me, can I go this faster? So, what actually we use aging values and the methods. So, okay, you know the, the non zero vector, which is called aging vector. Uh, selector satisfying this equation. So, uh, of course, this definition is also applied for high dimension, but here, as I said, we are doing in the plane, so I give only the definitions for the matrix two times two, but of course, uh, we have. So, how to find the, the inheritance? So, so, solving the characteristic equation. And in our case, the matrix is A, B, C, D. So, the characteristic equation is. Pretty much typical, we will use this uh, later, so that's why I, I wrote it. So, this is basically the quadratic equation. This coefficient here is the trace of the matrix, and this coefficient here is the determinant of the matrix. So, the calculus is pretty much similar, and of course, the uh, the, the eigenvalues depends on the t square minus 4g, so the discriminant. And of course, we will, in the later, consider uh, three typical uh, phase portraits depending on the nature of the roots of uh, the characteristic equation or the uh, eigenvalues. So we have two reals and this thing or the simple real root or to uh, conjugate uh, complex uh, root and of course the appropriate aging values. Uh, of course, solving um, uh, linear systems of differential equation of the second order or high order, uh, never mind, uh, is uh, done if you find the aging values or aging uh, values of the, uh, of the matrix. So the linear systems with the constant coefficients, of course. Uh, how we do that? So if um, V is eigenvector of some matrix associated with the eigenvalue of lambda, then this function, so exponential function A lambda T multiplied by the eigenvector is the solution of the differential equation. So I, here I uh, show this, but this is really uh, pretty much a basic uh, calculation and very easy, of course, using here that uh, V is a gen vector. So here and here, and after that, it's, it's pretty much easy. Um, so for our matrix, two times two, we can find two a gen values. So we have the two solutions. Okay, and if you find uh, the eigenvalues which are different, then the appropriate vectors, the eigenvectors, are what we say the uh, linear independent and form the, the basis in the, in the phase plane or in the, uh, in the plane uh, in our quadrant, which means that I will go to, to this, of course, um, I will send you after I finish. So from today, you will have uh, this textbook, which is here, uh, uploaded on the website. So all this will be, uh, will be uploaded uh, as, as, the, as the textbook on the paper. So uh, if we make uh, what we call the linear combination of these two solutions, so alpha and beta, so arbitrary real constant, so alpha multiplied by one solution, beta multiplied by the second solution. That is what we call in differential equation the general solution. What is general solution? This means that from the general solution, you can obtain a solution of the initial value problem. You just uh, uh, change uh, the initial values, and uh, that means that you will calculate the constant alpha and beta. It will be not arbitrary, but particular constant, and then you uh, obtain the solution of the initial value, initial value problem. Uh, so uh, 
uh, obtaining the radio values and angular values are very uh, close to uh, solutions of the differential equation. Uh, for the general matrix, uh, no matter what uh, dimension, uh, we can do uh, this way, but uh, there is an easier way using the exponential uh, matrix, uh, which is uh, equivalent to exponential function in the, uh, for the first order differential equation. But this is the technique that uh, I will not explain here, only uh, what we'll need. Uh, of course, if we have some typical, you will see later, um, matrix form uh, of the second order differential equation, then uh, you can uh, solve it uh, easier. So no need to um, make uh, to uh, uh, obtain the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues of, of the systems. And one of such system is what we called here. Okay, it's uncoupled system. What that means? That means basically the more simple that in the first equation you don't have epsilon and in the second equation you don't have it. So you can just separate these two equations and solve it separately, like the first order differential equation. So this uh, both this first order differential equation is what we call the by the method of separation of variables. So much easy as you see. So x on one side, t on other side, okay? So this is dx and dt. So you move x on the left, dt on the right, put the integrate and finish. <laughs> Pretty much easy. <laughs> Pretty this is the first differential equation that you learn. <laughs> I think learn all the basic courses in differential equation. The second one is linear differential equation. Uh, so we have the, the general solution. Of course, also here the t is arbitrarily constant. But if you have some initial value x of zero, then it will be equal to to c. So c is basically determined by the initial uh, initial value. If you have some initial value, then you will have the, the, the constant c, and you have the solution of the, the initial problem. So uh, using this, you can now be much easy without uh, any problem solve this what we call uncoupled linear system uh, of uh, second order. So this is the solution of the first equation. This is the solution now of the second equation. Just a uh, method of separation. The second example is like this. Now you have a lambda on the main diagonal and one zero. So the system looks like this. Now it is not uncoupled. In the second equation is solved by the separation okay but if you know epsilon then the first equation becomes a linear differential equation so the general form of the linear first order linear differential equation is like this so x prime plus some function multiplied by unknown function is equal to some given function so p and q are given function we want to uh, to solve in x and we have a formula as i said so this is the only linear differential equation that we have to solve even the second order linear differential equation with arbitrary coefficient in general it is not solved so we can only do some quantitative analysis on numerical uh, numerical methods or so so i gave you here the, the formula uh <clears throat> If we apply this formula now, of course, P of T here is only the constant lambda. These integrals are pretty much easy. Okay. Uh, here, Q of T is uh, epsilon. Okay. So we first saw this, we have epsilon, and then Q of T is just epsilon 
of t which we obtain. So if we enrich these integrals, we form um, the general solution. So as you see, the first equation is just the, the linear function multiplied by exponential function. And the other solution is with exponential delta or the exponential decay, depending on how long. But that's what will be um, important, important for us. Uh, so why I give these particular examples here to show you how to solve, because uh, we will use it to plot our first phase portals. Namely, uh, for any given matrix, uh, two times two, uh there is uh invertible what is mean invertible so there is inverse matrix that we can transform the matrix to one of these two forms uh four forms three forms actually that's not um uh, many differences in two and three but i will explain that here so every matrix you can uh, you can uh, transform either to this form, so with two real constants on the main diagonal. If you do that, then this is our first example. So this is uncoupled uh, system of differential equations so very easily solved. The second case, this one is also our second example, is lambda lambda and one behind. So this means that the second equation is uh, solved with uh, the separation of variables and the first equation is linear so we can yeah so and um i didn't want to go into to, to the solution of uh, this uh, fourth type with uh, the lack of uh, the time and uh, the technique is pretty much uh different uh, but you can also much uh, easy solve also uh, the systems if the matrix looks like this and the matrix will look like this if you have yes what kind of eigen values of course. of course the first case and you you have two different eigen values the second case is when you have double root so lambda lambda double root so the matrix needs to look like case two or three. You will see how it depends. And in the third case, you will have a complex. Yeah, eight and wise. Exactly. So this is this is exactly the only three possible ways of the, the, the right. matrix. And uh, for each, you will see that we will pretty much easy obtain the, the phase portrait and uh, plot it. But the problem with the third case if not the complexity of the eigenvalues, the, the complexity, the complexity is, is the problem of the, the matrix is not diagonalizable, no? Yeah, you know? it is. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Ah. I mean, in, in this way. Okay. Yeah, not, not uh, quite so much in this way. Yeah. 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 You will always uh, get the, the, the form like this. So the real part of the eigenvalues of the main diagonal and the uh, imaginary part of the eigenvalues here, but with a different side. Uh, I was uh, uh, talking about the third case, number three. Uh, ah, number three? Yeah, you have problems because the matrix, you cannot diagonalize it, no? Uh, but you can always put it in this form. And your diagonal. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, that, that is the, the, the next technique. Of course, how to put uh, the matrix in either of these four forms, okay? As I said, uh, generally it depends on the eigenvalues. Um, so this is the, just the, the, the show. So what we uh, do for somebody that don't know what is the, you know what is the show for all of the matrices. So, okay, what we want to do? We want to change the coordinate system. That's the most simple explanation that I can give you. So the change of the coordinate systems from the beginning to, to uh, put the matrix in, in this way. How we do that? We make some, what we call in mathematics, linear transformation. What is linear transformation? That is matrix. So we want to multiply with the matrix that's 
the matrix T here has to be invertible, so it's the domain has to be uh, different from zero. And if you multiply from the left side with the inverse matrix and the, from the right side with that matrix, you will put uh, the matrix A in either of these four forms. So let's go. Uh, it's like, okay, uh, before before the example. So what this actually has to do with our differential equation? So we also transform the differential equation, but we will change nothing that you see, almost nothing. We will just uh, obtain the simpler uh, form of the matrix to plot it over here. That's that's our that's our part. Okay. But uh, as you see, we will not change. We will not change uh, the stability of the fixed point, which is the most important thing. What we going to do because we are doing with the stability of the fixed point. We will not change the properties of the trajectory. So the periodic solution will stay the periodic solution. If you have a syntopically stable fixed point, it will stay the syntopically stable. So um, let's say that the phase pattern that you will see will just slightly deformed. Uh, but the formation is quite uh, logical if you think that you don't have uh, no more uh, the, um, the systems like this. Now you have a different uh, coordinate systems, which is not perpendicular. That is basically what, what you do. We change uh, the uh, basic vectors of, of the system. So if we transform uh, our linear systems, now instead of metrics, we have this, what we call, I called it here, canonical form of the matrix. What is what um, the colleague said, especially in the mathematics, this is to show down canonical uh, form of, mm -hmm. of the matrix. And we can also do that with a more calculation and more mathematics for any uh, any matrix. So dimension is, uh, uh, dimension is, yeah. I have a question for the special case of uh, rest now. No. no, it's just diagonal. So, so uh, you have uh, on uh, diagonal some values or the blocks of some matrix uh, on, on the on the diagonal, so it's uh, not connected with the. Uh, yeah. uh, so uh, what is the, the the connection between the these two systems? As I said, if we have the systems, let's say of this new system, then x of t so multiplied by matrix transformation t multiplied by solution of the second gives the solution of the first. Okay, so if we solve first, and if we have the matrix transformation, then we have the solution of the original system. Okay, and as we see, the second system is very easily solved in first three cases. It is easily solved also in the fourth cases, but uh, we will, as I said, not go there. Uh, so it's basically, of course, in the contrary, also, if you have the solutions of the matrix, uh, the linear math T or the transformation also converts the solution of the original systems to the solution of this system. We will call it in the canonical, uh, canonical form. So it will be probably uh, easier if we go to some uh, easy examples. So uh, what is the question? Of course, the first question is how the matrix T looks like. And if you have matrix T, then you just uh, uh, obtain the inverse matrix or multiply these three matrix T minus one A T and you obtain this canonical form. So the question is how to uh, what what's the, the the form of the matrix T, the, so the matrix of transformation, how the linear transformation looks like. In the first case, and the eigenvalues are real and distinct. We have two alien vectors. The matrix C is very easy. Just put on the columns the vector. Okay. So if we have alien vector here and the other alien vector, the matrix is, so this is the first vector, 
and this is the second one. Since the vectors are linear independent, the matrix is invertible, so no problem. So T minus one multiple A multiple T will give the canonical form of the system, and the canonical form will be we will just obtain the form with the uh, real eigenvalues on the main diagonal. So lambda one, lambda two. It's always it's always like that. So basically you can uh, write this matrix without t okay because we know that you can learn that and you can always write matrix there no problem but what do we use matrix t but we need the matrix because when we go to the solution of the second distance we have to go back okay so if you have the solution of the systems in the canonical form, you want the solutions of the regional systems. That's why you need the matrix T. Otherwise, you will uh, you you can write the the form of the canonical matrix without matrix T. It's always like this, no problem. In the complex, then what's the problem? Not so the big problem is that. Uh, when you have a complex thinking values, you will also have a complex thinking value. How do you form uh, the matrix of transformation now? Now, you put the real part of the eigenvector and the imaginary part of the vector as the vector of columns. Okay? So the matrix T will be matrix which is vector T and vector T of like vector forms. That's all. And the canonical form, in this case, looks like so always a real part of the eigenvalue on the main diagonal and imaginary part on the other diagonal, but with uh, minus and plus. And maybe the most difficult case is the repeated angle wires. Why? Because if you have a double root, so lambda only, then uh, there is two cases. One, sometimes you will obtain two angle vectors. Which are linearly independent, but mostly you will only have the one taken back. So, how to make another? So, to make the matrix of transformation. So, the matrix of transformation will be this taken vector will be the first column, but how to obtain uh, the second? So, the second linear independent vector will be obtained as the solution of this system. So A minus lambda, lambda is the agent vector of the V, or oh, I just wrote it in the, in the usual matrix form. So you just, you have a V, V is the first agent vector. So you just solve this linear system of the equation according to double one and double two, and you obtain this second vector and make the matrix transformation which will transform uh, the matrix in the canonical form which now have lambda and lambda on the main angle and just one about the, the main angle on the right uh, icon so here um, here i have a um, couple of examples just so the first example, you have a matrix. So to find eigenvalues, actually you have the determinant of this. If you could, you have the quadratic equation like this, which solutions, which roots are minus two and one. This is the first case. When you have two real and distinct eigenvalues. To find the eigenvectors, what we said, so you, um so the system so for uh, lambda minus two 
we have this equation. Of course, now it is actually one equation because the rank of the matrix is one here. Yeah. Uh, one question. Yeah. Is there any cases for uh, uh, we not get the inverse of two that we have to not that not exist? Is there any cases where the inverse for mm -hmm. T would not exist? Uh, here it always exists because uh, the format of the linear independent vector vectors that mean that always the determinant will be obscure. That's that's why it is, it is important that the matrix T is form of two linear independent vectors. This so then the determinant will be that means always we get the inverse of the as we can go to the other that, that, that's, that's why it is important that uh, the, the vectors are in the way. Is it applicable only to nonlinear system? Say the nonlinear system? To the linear system. Is it applicable to nonlinear system? Uh, no. No. No, uh, I mean, this is uh, generally in connection with the, the, the matrix. This is eigenvalues and eigenvalues of the matrix. Okay, and we transform the matrix. If you have a nonlinear system, what algebraic nonlinear? Algebraic nonlinear system? And you don't have a matrix of the system. No? So you're approximating? Right, can you approximate sometimes? Yeah, that, that's actually what we will do later because when you when you have a nonlinear system of differential equation, when you do linearization, then from the nonlinear system, the technique of linearization, you will make a, a linear system and then you will discuss it. And you can obtain the, the structure of the phase portrait around the, the very close. Around no, the global picture, or the global picture, you will know. But we will talk about this, the continuation. So, uh, okay, right. So, in this, so this, uh, in the first case, one, one, in the second case, for example, two, one. So, the matrix transformation is uh, this is first vector. This is the second one. Just to note, the order of the vectors are also not important. You can put the first and the second, then in the diagonal form, you will just uh, the first agent values will be on the left corner and the second will be on the, the right corner, but it is no matter. So you don't have to uh, pay attention about the, the uh, Q of the, the Q of the agent. 10 minutes and we will be back. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting confused about Jordan form and the diagonal lens. I think it's like diagonal lens. It's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same because the, the Jordan normal form, uh, not necessarily only uh, make the values of the diagonal, it can have a blocks uh, which can look like here. So the values and in Above the main diagonal, you have one, 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 one. Yeah, <laughs> In depend, uh, depending on the, uh, is this a uh, root? Uh, the number of roots on the dimension of the proper, the proper area. Uh, of space. The, of, of state on the number of the eigenvectors uh, for multiplicity use of the agent of the characteristic equation. So when you have the multiplicity of the agent vector, then uh, the subspace of the agent uh, vectors will be lost. Uh, only you can diagonalize if you leave the number of uh, eigenvalues different. No. Uh, yeah, the, the number of the multiplicity of the roots of the eigenvalues coincide with the dimension of the associated S subspace of eigenvectors. And if not, you what the best thing you can do is to create a your account that form as the blocks. With blocks, yeah. But not necessarily just the, the form of the economization that you will just have uh, the values on the main diagonal of 
the matrix. Uh, so with this transformation matrix, as we know, we have this form. So this is lambda one and lambda two on the main line. As I said, if you just change the order of this in general, you will obtain uh, one here and minus two back here. Uh, okay, the next example is uh, for the complex. So in this case, you have roots two plus minus one. So this is the solution of this quadratic equation. And to find the A directors, we again change here the eigenvalue and obtain this system which uh, reduced to one equation, which is again. So we divide one by one. So we can take, uh, for example, what I took. I took that uh, V1 is minus E, and then V2 is minus E squared or one. Okay. Now, as I said, we obtain a complex eigenvectors. Okay. Now you have to apart real and imaginary part. So what is the real part of this vector? If here is a zero, and for the second real part is one. Okay. Plus, what is the imaginary part here? Of course, minus one. And the second part is to zero. Okay. Clear? Yeah. So just separate real and imaginary part of this vector. Because now we will make the matrix transformation. So this is the first vector and this is the second vector. This is the matrix. Okay. In this case, so you will always get the, the complex, but you separate the real and the imaginary part, and uh, the real part will be uh, the first uh, column, and the uh, imaginary part of the eigenvector will be the, the second the second column. And this third case, now we have a double root of this matrix. So this quadratic equation has a double root minus four. If, if we try to find the eigen, eigen vectors, we again uh, obtain the one equation from here. So we have one. Again, but what I put, I put uh, V1 minus one and then V2 is four. So we need another agent vector, okay? So I told you another agent vector will be the solution of this system. So lambda is minus four. So you just, I mean, more or less, you use this matrix multiply double one, double two. And from the right side is the real eigenvector, okay? Minus one and minus four. So this is the left three. So this is again, just the, the simple linear system algebraic of two equation. Again, the, the rank of the matrix once we uh, obtain only one equation, uh, of course. And here is equation, the solution. So you just choose double one and you get the second vector. So I here uh, choose double one, one quarter, and then the double two. So now the matrix transformation is this is a real agent vector, okay, the one that we obtain. And the second column is the vector that we obtain in this way. With this matrix transformation, now the canonical form looks like which so minus four, minus four, and we have one 
and also this is the second case that we also saw. So uh, we will see that uh, generally this um, this technique actually is uh, is used as I uh, as I explained. So we will have the matrix. We will transform it to canonical form in order to easily plot the first alpha spiral phase portrait tomorrow. Uh, and you will see that the phase portrait of the canonical form, phase portrait of the um, given system, so uh, it will be, will be uh, reset topological equivalent, so not index fashion or well they change. So it will be always enough to plot uh, the canonical form, which is very easy to conclude whatever you want to Nothing okay. to the original. Uh, so tomorrow, catching our first phase portrait, but for today, I think I will finish. So any questions? Yeah, sure. 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 <laughs> Uh, what is the minimum requirement for for the periodic for periodic oh. What is the minimum, minimum requirement for the dynamic system for the periodic No, we that. The minimum or the maximum or the patient position. Other questions? Exactly. Which can give you, I mean, from the previous, uh, because of the systems that you can immediately say, you will have. That's why we do everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can use that. Just on the second order uh, equations. There is a thing with the determinant where you know you were given a scenario solution, right? Like if you is the determinant is above two rows. So it's like is it due to a thing? But yes, I mean uh, for, for the, the equation for the linear equation it's easy. Yeah. I mean you you can you, you will see it at the end. It will be very easy when you just respond to the matrix, you know, uh, at the end in two minutes you will say. Uh, who was the, the phase portrait for that? For the non For the non winner? For the non winner? No? Because the, the, the biggest problem you will see at the end in the non linear dynamics is exactly how to prove that uh, the non linear system has a limit cycle. The limit cycle is that it has a periodic solution, but for certain systems, it's very, very hard. To, to establish even two dimensions, not not to mention higher dimensional uh, the systems uh, to prove the existence of the limit cycle, meaning you have a, a periodic solution. Uh, so really it's very very hard. But each dimension is not very complicated with the bond theorem. You have to prove they they the variance the variance have to make an attractive yeah yeah sometimes it's it's easier to out of rotation that's why that's why we learned the hot bifurcation because tracking region yeah it's, it, it was okay. it's tricky it's tricky my example yeah, yeah. but of course this is the basic tool that i will explain you thank you it's <laughs> not, not too much but i try to to do do as, as i said as uh, as less mathematics as I, I think it's not too, too much.
to go deep in, in, inside the, the, the mathematics tool, but this is the, the basic math mathematics uh, calculus that, uh, that we need in order to continue. Let's, Thank you. Thank you, Jelena. We'll first stop sharing and the rest I think we'll. Yeah, it's a